whether you realize it or not, both the Federal Reserve and the Central Bank of China, the PBOC, has declared that it is time for hyperinflation. Let me show you what I mean by that. Imagine that dead inflation is the breath that fills the economy balloon. Now, of course, at first, this looks great and the balloon is nice and solid. And more and more debt is created, but there's a deflationary pinhole in it. So instead of getting bigger, it's deflating and becoming smaller and weaker. Plus, that deflationary pinhole keeps getting bigger and that requires even more debt inflation. Because of the current system that we're in, you have to keep inflating the economy or it implodes. So, both the PBOC and the Federal Reserve are lowering rates. That is an inflationary process and policy. And if they keep blowing it up, they feel that they can deal with inflation better than they can with deflation. But the problem is the economy balloon is so blown up with debt that maybe even one more blow is going to pop this debt balloon. I was ready for it. I knew that was gonna happen. Are you? So let me show you what's really happening because this is such a huge pattern shift. I can't even tell you how important it is that you have sound money to protect yourself. Now, what's going on in the markets? I mean, yesterday was a down day or the beginning of the week, I should say, was a down day and then the markets are rocking but they use the job day shocker to vindicate the great risk rally because valuations don't matter. All that matters is the stock market keeps going up because there's so much riding on it. There's all the pensions that are out there that are invested in stocks and bonds. There is all of the derivatives out there that makes all of this that much more risky because all derivatives are, are big, fat, leverage, debt upon debt upon debt upon debt bets, and they better go right. Now you can't really see, neither can I, what's happening inside of the world of derivatives, but it's not a pretty picture. The central banks are scared to death. That's why they are pivoting, dropping interest rates and stimulating. And this is the first time that the Federal Reserve has lowered rates into an already easy money environment. This is huge, huge. This point is being incredibly overlooked today that China was exporting deflation through industrial metal prices at their economy, real estate market and consumer base was weakening because we know China has been transitioning into a consumer based economy. In the past week, China has flipped that script with its significant and huge stimulus. What is that huge stimulus? Oh, there you go. That's what they have which has led to a move up in many major industrial metals, but especially in physical gold and physical silver, which are used in every single area of the global economy. That's why you see gold and silver rising so rapidly. But this is really the key point here and what I wanna point out so clearly is that both the Fed pivot and the PBOC pivot with lots more of this in anticipation. The more of the dollars, the yen, the yuan, whatever, the more that they print, the less 
purchasing power value what's already out there has. And we witness that through inflation. So basically, I mean, I'm telling you, we already saw with the M2 supply that they sh that there's already a shift in the speed at which people spend money because they are aware of the inflation. Rapid inflation, which they want us to think is under control, not under control. And the reality is, is the markets are deflating. The markets want to go down. They're too top heavy. They're too overvalued. And the Fed and the PBOC is saying, no, 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 because then consumers won't consume as much. And we have this big bubble and we can deal with that. Well, they can't deal with that. They can't, but there's only one way to fight that deflation and that's with inflation. That's the only way to do it. So it's not like there's a whole lot of choice and they've just announced that they'd rather deal with hyperinflation than deflation. Fed's Goolsby calls jobs report superb. And yet he still sees a rate cut ahead. If it's so superb, if the economy is doing so great, why are you cutting rates? Why? Because they cannot deal with the deflation. That's why. Still, Goolsby said the job market by a broad set of measures is cooling. And there are even some signs that inflation could undershoot the Fed's 2% target. What they're talking about is deflation. There are pieces of strong data and then there are pieces of weakness. With the US Central Bank's policy rate far above what most policy sees as the eventual settling point, Goolsby said it is appropriate for the Fed to bring it down a lot over the next 12 to 18 months, as most of its policymakers currently expect. That is an inflationary environment. We will see prices go up very, very rapidly. Are you ready for that? You know how to get ready? You put physical metal into your portfolio, sound money, gold, sound money, silver, and just keep accumulating. It doesn't matter what the spot price does. It's severely undervalued and you see the central banks loading up. Frankly, so should you. Hyperinflation is the only thing to fight hyperdeflation. And we've been on a deflationary track since 1971. Well, are you ready for that hyperinflation? Because a record seasonal adjustment tones down blowout US jobs report. Well, what does that mean? That means that they can say anything they want and then, and that's what matters, right? So the markets are going up, happy days are here again. And yet at the same time, in a few months time, when they re do that revision downward, it's not going to matter. So it matters today. So they lie today, although maybe they're not really trying to lie, but I can tell you this and you can see it for yourself that this is the largest seasonal factor on record. In other words, payrolls had the biggest adjustment for any September in the past two decades. And that data, frankly, is getting weaker. So what are you going to do about it? Because the, where they get their data from is self-reporting. The extremely low response rate to the payroll survey waves a red flag means you can't really see what's happening. We are convinced therefore that September's Brent will be revised much lower over the coming months. But all the markets here is that it was a blowout jobs number. Why are you lowering rates? Why would you do that? Because you know, these figures are, are going to be adjusted down and you have to stimulate. You need to create more debt and more money. And every time they do that, the value goes down. Frankly, by the time these adjustments are made, the markets don't care anymore. They don't matter. So how convenient is this? And I might just remind you of recently, like August, this is from August 23rd, 24. So just a little while ago that the jobs report revision was that the U S added uh, 818,000 
fewer jobs than was originally believed, in other words, than what was reported. The U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics on Wednesday revised down its estimate of total employment in March. So this was in August, but the reports came out in March. By 818,000, the largest such downgrade in 15 years, that effectively means that there were 818,000 fewer jobs gained than first believed from April 2023 through March 2024. It's good to be king, isn't it? The revision is, so how do they get these numbers anyway? The revision is based on the quarterly census of employment and wages, which draws from the state unemployment insurance records that reflect actual payrolls, while the prior, the prior estimates come from monthly surveys. And as I just showed you, that there was very few entities that were actually reporting. So this data, frankly, this jobs report, it means nothing. It's just a big fat, oops, huh. Isn't that nice? Is that what you want to base your financial future on? Their estimates and oopsie, unintended consequence, because this, it's been a tough year for the tech industry with nearly 100,000 layoffs so far this year. That was the end of August. And more are coming on board. In fact, the jobs day data economists rely on is about to get even less dependable. Really? Well, the BLS, unfortunately, the survey this data is collected from called the Current Population Survey, or CPS, has been woefully under-resourced. And more than a decade of decline, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, BLS, has been forced to propose cuts to the CPS sample, which informs our monthly employment report, inflation numbers, wage gap statistics, and more. Starting as soon as January, it's already begun. It's already begun. Whether you're applying for a job, buying a house, or applying for a small business loan to open the mom and pop restaurant of your dreams, which is actually a nightmare, personal experience, but anyway, this cut will have very real effects. This further exacerbates declining survey response rates post pandemic. Fewer respondents mean that this data is less reliable and less informative, but it can be used to move the markets. Woohoo! What a great thing! Yay! Not really. And we can see in the offing, this is just one example, Samsung to cut thousands of jobs amid struggles in AI markets. Well, wait a minute, isn't AI artificial intelligence what, that is justifying these extraordinarily lofty levels? Methinks it feels kind of like 99 with that, with the internet bubble that happened and it took many years for the NASDAQ to recoup. But the point of this is that this is global deflation. And again, there is only one way to fight inflation, and that's with deflation. And only one way to fight deflation, and that is with inflation. So please, I hope you can see this clearly, that both the Federal Reserve and the PBOC has declared that they're ready for hyperinflation which really means that they are ready for this game to end. Is that why it's called Basel III Endgame? Hmm, just a thought, just for you to think. But you need to know what happens to both gold and silver during these periods of time. Well, here you go. This is gold, silver, and commodities during deflation. These are other commodities, right? But here's your gold and here's your silver in the bouts of deflation in the US. And my goodness, gold outperforms everything. And I've shown you that when I've shown you the basket of food and I've shown it to you when buying a car or anything else. Silver maintains your ability to purchase the same food basket. Gold outperforms and not only does that piece to protect your real estate, property, taxes, mortgages, things like that, but also to put you in a position 
to gather wealth and be on the other side of this piece better off than you were going into it. So let me show you because this is how it performs during deflation. Well, how does gold perform during hyperinflation? Let's look at Germany going back to the 20s. Boom. And oh, now there's Russia in the 90s, end of the 90s, the Russian ruble. And this is Zimbabwe in the first overnight revaluation in 2006 and 2007. And they just did another one just, what, about a week -ish ago or something like that. This stuff won't help you because they are inflating it away. It's purchasing power value. You can still have these bills. I mean, here's a $10 trillion Zimbabwe note. So I'm a trillionaire, but I can't buy anything with it. What happened in Zimbabwe to both gold and silver? Well, you're looking at what happened, right? Because this is real money. This is sound money. Make no mistake about it. Again, there is only one way, not two or three or seven, one way to fight deflation and that's with inflation. And that was just announced by the two largest economies in the world. What do you think? We want to make sure that when this bubble pops, you're on the right side of it. You're not caught in the middle of it. And instead of your wealth transferring away from you, wow, how about, I mean, just a thought. How about if that wealth transfers your way? You want that to happen? This is what you need. 6,000 years of history has shown us. And I personally believe it. So I know that we have so much that is going on that we have to pay attention to. But the biggest thing is developing those communities locally, food, water, energy, security, barterability, wealth preservation, community, and shelter, get it done. And we're gonna show you how Morgan is our community developer, development and leader. We've got so much stuff in the works but you need to know how to grow your community around you. You can start at the farmer's market with who grows your food, get to know them, create a relationship with them, give them a little bit of labor. You'll learn a skill and create a relationship. But globally, we have to come together just by creating a very peaceful and quiet revolution by converting your fiat money, your government debt-based money that they control into sound money. That's what they're doing for themselves. And who knows more about how they're destroying the currency than those that are actually doing it. So if we come together, we can demand our voices be heard and we can have a more sound and fair monetary system going into this next iteration. Join us in this global community. And until next we meet, 100 bazillion percent, and I see it more and more every day. If we come together in community, we can really accomplish anything. And we can accomplish everything. Because you're sitting there and you're going, but I'm just one person. What can I do? And you're absolutely right. One person cannot do anything against their laws and their rules. But 8.4 billion people that there are in the world, and if 3% of those come together and convert their fiat into sound money, now they have to give us a voice. So until next we meet, please create your community and be safe out there. Bye-bye.